Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x is equal to infinity, and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x is equal to zero. Now, first of all, let's remind ourselves what e to the x is. The limit of one plus x over n to the power of n is equal to e to the x for all real numbers x. And we have three properties of the exponential function that we have proven. which are these. So this is all well and good, but most importantly, what do these two things mean? Well, to say limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x equals infinity means the following. It means for every real number alpha, there exists a real number capital N, such that for all real numbers x greater than or equal to capital N, e to the x is greater than alpha. So to put this another way, if you give me any real number alpha, I guarantee you I can find a real number capital N, such that if you look at the graph of e to the x everywhere to the right of capital N, e to the x will always sit above the line y equals alpha. Right, and you could do this for any real number alpha. So that's what this means. Next. What do we mean when we say limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x equals zero? We mean the following. We mean for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a real number capital N, such that for all real numbers x less than or equal to capital N, the absolute value of e to the x minus zero is less than epsilon. And to put this another way, if you give me any positive real number epsilon, I guarantee you I can find a real number capital N such that if you look at the graph of e to the x everywhere to the left of capital N, then the distance between e to the x and zero will always be at most epsilon. And you could do this for every positive real number epsilon. So that's what this means. So now let's get into proving these two things. We'll start out by proving this limit. And to prove this limit, that really means we're trying to prove this statement. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every real number alpha, let's give ourselves an arbitrary real number alpha. And from here, we want to find a real number capital N such that this is true. Well, the claim is, if we take this real number capital N to be alpha, then this statement will be true. So, taking capital N to be alpha, we proceed to prove that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every real number x greater than or equal to alpha, let's give ourselves an arbitrary real number x greater than or equal to alpha. From here, we want to show that e to the x is greater than alpha. Well, by this preliminary result, we know that e to the x is greater than or equal to 1 plus x. And x is greater than or equal to alpha. So 1 plus x is greater than or equal to 1 plus alpha, which is greater than alpha. So we have shown that e to the x is greater than alpha, which is exactly what we wanted. And so we have proven this statement, which means we have proven limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x is equal to infinity. So now, let's prove this limit. Well, to prove this, that really amounts to proving that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. From here, we want to find a real number capital N such that this statement is true. Now, we can use the fact that this limit is true in order to prove this limit, right? Since we know this limit is true, this means we know that this statement is true. And this statement works for every real number. So in particular, it must work for the real number one over epsilon. So taking alpha to be one over epsilon, we have that this statement is true. So there exists a real number capital N 
such that for all x greater than or equal to capital N, we have that e to the x is greater than 1 over epsilon. Now, we can call this real number whatever we want, so instead I'm going to call it capital N naught. Because remember, our whole goal is to find a real number capital N such that this is true. Well, the claim is, if we take this real number to be the negative of capital N naught, then this statement will be true. So taking capital N to be negative capital N naught, we proceed to prove that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every real number x less than or equal to negative capital N naught, let's give ourselves an arbitrary real number x less than or equal to negative capital N naught. Now from here, we want to show that this inequality is true. Now, since x is less than or equal to negative capital N naught, it follows that the negative x is greater than or equal to capital N naught. But remember, we know that this statement is true. And this statement works for every real number greater than or equal to capital N naught. So in particular, it must work for negative x. So taking this x to be negative x, we have that e to the negative x is greater than 1 over epsilon. But then, all we have to do is multiply both sides of this inequality by e to the x times epsilon. And remember, e to the x is greater than 0 for all real numbers x. So e to the x times epsilon is positive. So if we multiply both sides of this inequality by e to the x times epsilon, the sign of the inequality remain the same. So if we do that, we get this, but we know that the left-hand side is just going to simplify down to epsilon, and the right-hand side will simplify down to e to the x, and e to the x is just absolute value of e to the x minus 0. So we have absolute value of e to the x minus 0 is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted. So we have proven this statement, which proves limit as x versus negative infinity of e to the x is equal to zero. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.